Hey everyone, welcome to this Azure infrastructure update and this is kind of the end of April edition, a couple of days late. Um, just super quickly as always, um, if you like this, please like, please subscribe. If you have some cool comments, uh, I'll send you a challenge coin, a, a sticker if I like it. Um, new videos, I've just been quite busy the last couple of weeks. Um, produced one on Express Route. This is 80 minutes, so it's going to take some time, but it goes into all the details of high availability and architecture. Um, creating your first VM in Azure, kind of the other end of the spectrum, kind of getting started. Talked about Azure Blob data permissions, the way I can protect my data. And then yesterday, I did a video on Azure NetApp files. Trying to do that in about six minutes ish. So, what's new? So on the Azure Compute side, virtual machine scale sets now have an automatic deployment option for custom images. Now this is in public preview. Now it already had this for images from the marketplace. So these were images created by the owner of the operating system. They would put out a new version. And what I could do was be automatically roll that out as that new image published to my virtual machine scale set. Now, you don't have to worry about, well, is that gonna have like downtime or anything else? If you think about virtual machine scale set, let's just say I had five instances. Now, these are all behind a load balancer, and there's some image kind of of your OS, that's my gold image there. And the way that's gonna happen, now with my own custom images, they have to be in the shared image gallery can't just be a managed image, it's in kind of that shared gallery that can work across subscriptions even. And what I do is I create a new version of this. So now I create a V2 or V1.1, whatever that might be. It will never take down more than 20%. So I think about the update domains, I have kind of five minimum. What it will do is it will essentially, hey, I'll take this one down and I'll create a new one with the V2, add that back in to the scale set, add it behind the load balancer, then move to the next one. Recreate that. And any uh, custom script extensions, any data scripts I'm running, they'll get run to bring it back into my desired state. So it's just gonna happen for me. So this is huge. If I'm using virtual machine scale sets today and I have a custom image, now, when I patch that custom image, maybe monthly, I'm done. I create the newly patched custom image. My virtual machine scale set will just see, hey, look, there's a new version and automatically roll it out. Again, no more than 20% capacity drop. It will kind of scroll through those and automatically update my entire scale set. So I think that's a, a pretty huge bit of functionality there. Maintenance control for dedicated host and isolated VMs. Remember, an isolated VM is one where the VM basically takes up the whole host. No one is on that host with me. So now with this maintenance control for that isolated and if I have dedicated host, where I can create smaller VMs on the host, but it's still all my capacity, I now have a 35 day rolling window. So I can essentially batch up any updates that would be applied within that 35 days and control when it happens. Now, if I've not done anything for 35 days, it's gonna make me patch. But within that window, I can control when that maintenance occurs. The DCS V2 series has now gone GA. Again, this is part of the confidential computing, the Intel SGX enabled hardware. And on that hardware, it creates these secure partitions of the processor and the memory um, actually on the hardware. So you think encryption of data at rest and in transit, well now it's even encrypted and protected while it's being computed. And the Azure Red Hat OpenShift on OpenShift V4. So this is a collaboration between Microsoft and Red Hat. Um, this is kind of co-developed and it's now bringing that OpenShift in a managed fashion to Azure. I can create a cluster in minutes. I'm not managing any virtual machines. And I can think about this version as things like Kubernetes 1.6. Uh, I can bring my own virtual networks. There's full cluster administration roles. So it's just very easy to get up and running with OpenShift um, using this sort of collaboration. On the Azure networking side, well, now we have 
automatic reverse DNS zones. And the way that manifests, if I try and look up something via the IP address, well, now it's just going to work. If I just have regular Azure provided DNS, I'll get a return of the name dot internal dot cloud app dot net. That's the default um, zone we get. If I have a private DNS zone configured and linked to the network, well, then it's going to be the name dot the private DNS zone if I have that. Now, that's only within that virtual network. If I want reverse IP resolution um, between different virtual networks, I would still go ahead and create my own private reverse DNS zone and link it to multiple virtual networks. So nothing's changing there if I want it across networks. For the Azure Security Center, well, the identity and access security recommendations are now free. Uh, they used to be part of kind of the higher tier, but they're so important, Microsoft are now just showing those with the free tier. There are now dynamic compliance packages um, for, regula for regulatory compliance. So I can think about some of these compliances, they, they change over time. And these are manifested um, as policies in Azure Security Center. It creates initiatives with policies in them. So these new dynamic compliant packages, it can actually update them as the requirements change. It will actually go and enhance these initiatives that power these with new policies. You're just going to automatically get those. So I can go into Azure Security Center and there are additional policies and you'll see these new dynamic ones. Recommendations and alerts have two new ways of using them. So the first is I can actually now fire off a logic app if there's a recommendation or alert in Azure Security Center. Remember logic apps give me this nice kind of flow visual designer that I can hook into many different connectors. Um, it could be my ITSM system, I could raise a ticket. Um, I could tweet something, probably don't want to tweet if there's a security recommendation. Uh, there are templates that walk through all of these that I can use. So it's now super easy to actually fire off automations using those logic apps. Additionally, I can also now export them to Event Hub. Event Hub will be super useful as a publish subscribe. So now I could fire them off to Event Hub and a third party SIM could subscribe to that Event Hub, see those and then surface that. I can also fire them off to log analytics. So these are kind of two of the core diagnostic settings we see fairly consistently through all of the different Azure resources. Windows Virtual Desktop. So I did a separate video on this that, that kind of walks through. This is this managed offering where I click buttons and I spin up this AD joined desktop solution. It could be built on desktops or servers. It even gives me multi-session for Windows 10, uh, all in Azure. I can publish entire desktops or just publish certain applications. Um, clients available for iOS, Android, Mac OS, browser, Windows, etc. Huge spring update is now in public preview. And this is super, super exciting because Windows Virtual Desktop now becomes a first class Azure resource. It wasn't before. Before it was built on Azure, but it was using different services. It was kind of cobbled together. I would run scripts. There was a separate GUI I could install. There weren't any nice roles. Now it's a resource provider in Azure. Um, it's available through the portal. There are now four custom roles for Windows Virtual Desktop. So think of this as kind of a, a huge V2. I now have these new Windows Virtual Desktop workspaces. This kind of replaces the old Windows Virtual Desktop tenant. Now I still have all of those same components. I still think about host pools. I think about application groups. Um, I have my application groups. I have my session hosts. But it's just a, a flatter hierarchy now. Now, because it's now integrated with ARM, your Azure subscription ties into an Azure AD tenant. So now your Windows Virtual Desktop has to use the same Azure AD that my subscription uses. Before, I could do things and use a different Azure AD tenant. I can't do that anymore. But on the plus side, I don't have to do a manual consent. Before, I had to do a consent of Windows Virtual Desktop into Azure AD because who is Windows Virtual Desktop? Azure AD had no idea. Well, now it's actually an Azure resource. I don't have to do the consent anymore. So now, it can just deploy, 
but I can't link it to a different Azure AD. Now this is a different version. Um, think of this as kind of the, the next generation, which means the portal, the new tools, like the PowerShell was now just part of AZ, it cannot manage a deployment pre-ARM. There will be a migration coming out very soon. Miscellaneous, bits and pieces. Um, so back up, if I now have a VM built from a custom image, um, I can actually restore and replace the existing disk. Before I couldn't do that if it was a custom image. Also, Azure Files, I do snapshots to store kind of previous points in time. Well, now Azure Backup can manage those snapshots. So if I think about, hey, I have a policy for the backup around retention and when to take them, I can now apply that to Azure Files instances to really simplify the management. Cost management. So previously, cost management was all about utilization, but it wouldn't show me things like reserved instances. It wouldn't show me things like marketplace purchases. Well, now I can include those as part of my budget. So I can actually see, well, my reserved instance purchasing. I can see my Azure marketplace purchasing. And additionally, they're also now exposed through the resource graph. So in the resource graph, I can kind of look at, well, the publisher type. Um, marketplace, um, charge type purchase. I can see my um, reserved instances, publisher type Azure, charge type purchase. Uh, my existing kind of usage would still show as charge type usage. But now I'm exposing these in more places because I can build budgets around them. I can use the resource graph to actually get insight into them. And now Azure Monitor for VMs is generally available. This is phenomenal. It gives me great monitoring data about my VMs and virtual machine scale sets. It gives me insights into the guest performance. I can see this great dependency um, through the maps technology that's built on service maps. But it would show me, hey, look, um, this VM is being used by these other VMs on these ports. These are the communications. That's just going to roll in as part of that solution. So that's kind of our end of April summary for the past couple of weeks. I really hope this was useful. Uh, please subscribe, like, comment, share. And until next time, seriously, take care of yourselves. It's crazy out there. Take some you time, relax, try and ignore the negativity and just kind of stay positive. Take care.